In recent years, a quiet revolution has been brewing in the Philippines media landscape, the rise of newsletters. Once relegated to the sidelines of traditional journalism, newsletters have emerged as a powerful tool for information and dissemination and community building in the country. From curated roundups of local news to deep dives into niche topics, these newsletters cater to a diverse array of interests and preferences. As digital platforms continue to reshape how news is consumed, newsletters offer a personalized and more intimate alternative, fostering a deeper connection between writers and readers. In this era of information overload, the newsletter phenomenon in the Philippines represents a refreshing return to thoughtful, curated content tailored to the individual. To tell us more about the newsletter industry, we have here tonight Amanda Kua, CEO and founder of Backscoop. Good evening, Amanda. Good Thank evening, you so Carms. much for coming Thank by you. to PTV News tonight. And I'm so close. glad to be here. Thank you. I'm so excited to finally get to talk to the founder of the Southeast Asian newsletter that everybody has been talking about. First of all, congratulations on being recognized, uh, being one of Forbes 30 under 30 uh, honorees. You know, um, I think prestigious mentions like these do a tremendous impact for businesses, especially startups like yours. First of all, as everybody would like to know, how did you get started on this journey? Um, everybody knows that every startup begins with a burning need for some Thing. Please tell us all about that. Yeah, so I started my company three years ago when I was 19 years old. I was working at a startup for a year back then and I thought there was no one source of news for the entire Southeast Asian business landscape. And I, as an avid reader of news and books, I thought maybe I could solve this problem. I was taking a year off school at the time due to COVID and I thought might as well spend this one year productively and try to solve this problem with the experience I had after working at a startup for a year. So. Let me get this straight. You uh, started working immediately before college, or did you take a break in the middle of college? I started working before college oh. because right when I graduated high school, it was COVID, and I thought maybe the most productive time being at home instead of studying on the internet would be to try to find a job and get some work experience, and then after that, I could go to college. It turns out that I haven't gone back or started at all, but I just continued working. Wow, that is great. How, how, how old or how young is Backscoop? We're about to turn three years old. We started in 2021. Okay, this is great. Um, how, first of all, did your experiences in the Southeast Asian startup scene, being a CEO and founder of a startup itself, shape your, I would say, mindset and uh, perception about building businesses? I mean, being so young, you are almost just 20, <laughs> 22, perhaps? 22, yeah. Yes. I'm very curious, you know, you are part of the Gen Z generation, right? I'm very curious about, what particular mindset when it came to starting a business propelled you to get from start to finish? And what do you think Gen Zers like yourself who also want to become uh, entrepreneurs and business magnates in the future, you know, can apply to themselves to be, uh, I would say, champions in their field? Well, I was really fortunate to get to work at a startup for a year and I think that's the most important thing that I got because they taught me about how to start a business. I thought you needed so many years of experience, so much capital to start a business, but there I learned that you can start small. I had savings from working at my startup for a year and I started solo in my business. I was the only employee. I made sure my costs were the very minimum so I could fund it with my savings. And then I built a basic website, built a basic product, which was my newsletter. And I focused on trying to grow my business as fast as I could. And after getting a few thousand subscribers, some venture capitalists took notice of my business and wanted to invest. And that's where I got the capital to continue growing my business. And I'm so thankful for having worked at a startup to show me that you know it's possible to start and grow a business in a different way. But I think the most important thing it taught me was that I shouldn't be afraid of failure. When I started my business, I knew I'd work my hardest to try to make it work. But if I failed, it would be part of the process. OK, um, I, I love how you said that uh, you know, being being immersed in the startup world sort of gave you that jump start into realizing what the need was and what you needed to get done. I'm sure that starting this hasn't all just been, you know, go, go, go. You know, I'm, I'm super motivated today. It's being able to just do what needs to be done, even though you don't feel like it. Um, I mean, you mentioned you were a one woman team. I was a one woman team for, I think, almost two years, writing the newsletter every day. I would write four to five days a week for the newsletter to be out the next day and other people couldn't believe it but that's what it took um, to get started to you know be smart with the capital I had. 
Okay, um, could you manage to share some insights on how you were able to tap into uh, funding for startups and being able to sort of catch the eye of, of fellow uh, tech entrepreneurs and startup businesses? Did you use specific platforms? What avenues did you exploit? I think the most important thing to try to get funding is to have a good problem to solve and start a product that could get some traction so that when an investor sees your company, then they see that there's potential for the company. When I started my business, I honestly just wanted to learn about, you know, what is it like to talk to an investor? So I tapped into a few subscribers that I had of the newsletter. I saw they were investors and I said, could I practice speaking to you? And one thing led to another and I talked to an investor who did want to invest in my company. But later on, I met other investors because I was posting on LinkedIn. That was probably the biggest ch ch game changer for my business. I started posting about my company, my journey on LinkedIn, and that's how I grew my following, grew my subscribers, grew my network, and met more investors. So you think that uh, promoting Backscoop on LinkedIn was the game changer for yourself, to be able to connect to uh, prized investors and contacts to get you from A to B? Right. I mean, when I started my business, I had barely any contacts in the business world, in the startup industry. But being able to share about my company, the stories I was sharing about other companies, and share about my own journey allowed me to meet more investors and people who could read my content and actually hit the right target market for the product I had. So when the platform for Backscoop was ready, okay, you just hit send and promoted it on LinkedIn. And before you knew it, it started gaining traction over there. Is that how it started? So the first thing I did actually after starting my newsletter was sending it to all my friends on Facebook. One by one, I'd send them, hey, I just started a new business. Can you please subscribe to my newsletter? I sent it to like a thousand people, asked my friends to share it with their friends. Once I ran out of Facebook friends, then I started posting on LinkedIn a few months later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So it's really the power of, of social media and being able to connect people to different, uh, I would say, companies and perhaps people that eventually wanted to support your cause. Right now, Backscoop boasts of how many subscribers? Right now, we have almost 20,000 subscribers on the newsletter. Wow, wow. Okay. And this focuses specifically on Southeast Asian business and tech startups. Why the interest in, in, in tech entrepreneurship? Why the interest in, in startups to begin with? I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I thought that I would have to work for years in corporate to be able to get the credibility, to be able to, be able to get the savings, the funding to start a company. But then during that gap year before college, a startup took the chance on me to let me have a job, to teach me everything I needed to get started. And that's where I saw how much you know, the startup ecosystem could change someone's life and how it was so different from any other way of starting and running a business. And I absolutely fell in love with this space and I thought, you know, I want to try to solve a problem here. I want to share more stories here so that more people can actually join a startup, work there, or start their own startup. And one thing great about Backscoop, you know, I chanced upon um, scanning it, but eventually I'll get to, you know, subscribe as well. Um, I love how you're able to piece together the stories in, as you say, a fun and digestible way without any tech jargon. Right. Because I started in tech industry not knowing anything. All that jargon really made no sense to me. So I thought I should make it accessible for anyone to be able to understand what this startup is building, what they're going to be doing next. And to be honest, some other people working at startups, because startups build in all kinds of different industries, didn't even understand some of the news. So I wanted to make a platform where anyone can have access and understand the news, share in the wins, understand the problem, and be excited about what other people are building. Mm -hmm. I think the, the one paragraph that I read about um, in, in Backscoop when I chanced upon it really quickly was about Pandesal and how you linked it to the market. It was very interesting. And, and you know, just the fact that it still resonated with me just goes to show that it is very uh, relevant and easily rememberable. And like I said, it, it creates an impact. So, okay, we have a ton of other startups available right now. You know, um, newsletters are also, I think, experiencing sort of a renaissance. How do you plan to make Backscoop be relevant and continue to create that impact that you desire? I think one edge that we have as a media company is we have a direct relationship with the readers through having their email. They can also email us. And we have a connection with them through social media. I've messaged and met a lot of our readers in person and online. And that's how we get to understand a lot about what they want, what they're looking for, and that's how we have our edge. For example, just two months ago, we actually started writing about business stories of both traditional news, like traditional businesses and startup businesses. For example, the company called Outside, 
or the story of Charles and Keith or the story of Potato Corner because we found out that our readers did want to learn about their stories, how they started, how they grew, and what strategies they used to get to where they are today. And if I'm not mistaken, you don't just offer a newsletter. You also have a podcast. T tell us all about the other offerings that uh, is linked to Backscoop that you've also created. That's right. So on Backscoop.com, we have our written content. So that's our newsletter and our articles. But we also have the One More Scoop podcast where we interview founders, we interview executives, and interview investors about their personal journeys so that other people can actually learn how did this founder get started? What did they go through? Because actually when you get to know these people, you'll find out a lot of them aren't too different from you. They're people with a dream, people who had a hard time breaking into the industry. And it makes you really motivated and it made me motivated to keep going in my journey and that's why I wanted to share those stories. Wow, we are all really inspired. You are only 22 and we are very excited to see the future of Backscoop and where else you decide to um, conquer, which spaces. Please do invite our guests to connect on Backscoop and how. Thank you so much. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Amanda Kua, and you can also subscribe on www.backscoop.com. Thank you very much, Amanda. We are so excited to read Backscoop and very inspired to have you on the show. Thank you so much for sharing Thank your you story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.